Okay, good day everyone. So for today's discussion, we will be starting a new topic and that is lipids and lipoproteins. So last time we did discuss about carbohydrates, the metabolism of carbohydrates, the different diseases associated with carbohydrates, and also the different laboratory diagnosis and methods with regards to lipids, uh, with regards to carbohydrates. So for today, we will be discussing the same thing with regards to lipids and lipoproteins. So again, good day to everyone. And I hope that today we will be learning a lot of things for clinical chemistry one. So lipids and lipoproteins are also one of the most important biomolecules within our body. So alongside with carbohydrates, proteins, and amino acids, your lipids and lipoproteins are also very important. So for today's discussion, we will be talking about the different forms of lipids, at the same time, the different um, lipoprotein with regards to their structure and also with regards to their um, characteristics. We will also be talking about lipoprotein physiology and metabolism. At the same time, lipid and lipoprotein population distribution distributions alongside with the disease and disorders associated with them. And last but definitely not the least will be the lipid and lipoprotein measurement. So let us dig in to the first topic that we will be having for today. So the first one will be about um, the different forms of lipids. So there are different forms of lipids. Uh, within our body. But first, let us define what are lipids. So according to Bishop, uh, lipids are also known as fats. So these are um, essential um, biomolecules within our bodies. So they are characterized to be soluble in nonpolar organic solvents such as chloroform and ether, but relatively insoluble in polar solvents such as water. So Lipids are soluble if we are talking about and we are exposing them to nonpolar organic solvents, but non, they are insoluble when being associated with water. So these lipids are composed mostly of carbon-hydrogen bonds. So later on, I'll be showing you some of the essential lipids inside our body, and you will actually be seeing there that there are carbon and hydrogen bonds within them. So like what we were saying a while back, um, lipids are water insoluble. They are nonpolar, meaning they are hydrophobic. And for that very reason, they are being transported now by your lipoprotein. So let me first um, wrap up that for you before we proceed. So since lipids, okay, since our lipids or fats are insoluble with water, they cannot freely be transported in your plasma. So your plasma being majority is being consisted by water, uh, your lipids cannot be transported through your plasma freely. That's why they need a transport molecule. And what do we call the transport molecule? We call them lipoproteins. So as we go along, we will also be talking about lipoproteins in a short while. So these lipids that we are talking about are very important in our body because they are rich source of energy and they are also a very efficient way on how to store excess calories or excess energy sources. So referencing back to how we discuss carbohydrates, you all know now that through the process of gluconeogenesis, your lipids can actually be converted to glucose and then be used as energy source. That is the reason why lipids are being said to be rich source of energy. Because when you hydrolyze, when you separate a lipid, you can actually get have your fatty acids and you can also have their glycerol, which are two of the um, precursor of glucose when doing gluconeogenesis. In addition to that, lipids are very integral part of your cellular membrane. So remember that your cell membrane are semi-permeable and the reason why they are semi-permeable is because of the phospholipid bilayer. So having said that, let me just repeat it. It is a phospholipid bilayer, meaning to say they are also made up of lipids. And lastly, they are also precursor to steroid hormones, okay? They are precursor to steroid hormones. So your lipids are not just, so your lipids, your oils, are not just source of energy. 
Okay? They are not just so good source of energy, but they are also integral part, okay? They are also integral part of your um, cell membrane, okay? Of your cell membrane. And they are also precursor of steroid hormones. So when I say precursor of steroid hormones, we're talking about your um, corticosteroid hormones, your estrogens, your sex hormones, your sex androgens, which are all derived from your lipids. So let us go now to the different forms of lipids. So first, we have your fatty acids, we have your phospholipids, we have your triglycerides, and we do have your glycerol. So our goal for today is to actually define each of them and also differentiate one from the other. So let us go and talk about the first one, which is your fatty acids. So your fatty acids has a carbonyl group at a polar end and a hydrocarbon chain at a non-polar end. So meaning to say your fatty acids are actually amphiphatic compounds. So what do we mean by when I say amphipathic? So amphiphatic means they have both the hydrophilic and a hydrophobic region. Okay, a hydrophobic region. So you can see the hydrophilic um, region on the carbonyl group, which is the polar end, and the hydrocarbon chain, which is the hydrophobic group, which is for, uh, seen in the nonpolar tails. So fatty acids um, occur in living systems, and they are normally contain as even number of carbon atoms. And the hydrocarbon chain is usually unbranched. So these fatty acids are rare, rarely found free in the nature, but you can actually see fatty acids more common, most commonly um, as a compound. So meaning to say, uh, most of our uh, most of the fatty acids that you will actually be seeing are not free fatty acids, but actually bound fatty acids either to your glycerol, which can make up now your phospholipid or your triglyceride. But since we're talking about your uh, your fatty acids, let us go and define what are the different types of fatty acids. So we actually have two. We have the saturated and we have the unsaturated fatty acids. I hope this rings a bell uh, from your biochemistry. So when we are talking about saturated fatty acid, these are fatty acid that has only one single bond in the chain. And that single bond is found on the carboxyl group, or remember, in the carboxyl group, which is the hydrophilic region, okay? So we have different types of saturated fatty acids, like your lauric, your meristic, your palmitic, steric, and arachidic fatty um, arachidic acid. So um, they are named such according to the number of carbon atoms. And as you can see, uh, most of this saturated fatty acid has high melting point okay has high melting point meaning to say this um fatty as this type of fatty acid are actually solid in room temperature so not until they reach uh, this melting point they will become now like in their liquid form okay so one thing that i want you to remember with regards to fatty acids so i hope you would write this down fatty as um, your saturated fatty acid are usually seen um, in your animal sources, okay? In your animal sources. Of course, there's still exemption to the rule because, take for example, there are also plant-based um, saturated fatty acids which can be seen in your coconut, okay? In, in your coconut. So moving forward, let's go now to your unsaturated fatty acid. What about your unsaturated fatty acid? So unsaturated fatty acid um, are called unsaturated if there are carbon to carbon double bonds in the chain and the fatty acid is now called unsaturated. So meaning to say, aside from the double bond in the carbonyl region, um, like here in your um, saturated fatty acid, when we are talking about unsaturated fatty acid, they do have that double bond, okay? They do have that double bond in the carbonyl group, but they also have a double bond in the chain, okay? Can you see that? They are they have double bond in the chain. So this double bond, okay, this double bond um, can either be cis or trans, okay? So we have two configuration for unsaturated fatty acid. We have your cis configuration and your trans configuration. Sir, which one is the normally occurring? The normally occurring is actually the cis-unsaturated fat, 
Okay? Unsaturated fat. Unlike your trans unsaturated fatty acid, your trans fatty acid does not commonly is not commonly found in the nature. Um, be, why? Because these are synthetically being produced. How? Through the process of hydrogenation. Okay? Through the process of hydrogenation. Later on, I'll be going back to um, trans fatty acid and then I'll be wrapping up everything so that you'll be able to understand it better. Okay? So uh, can I see a thumbs up if everybody can understand what I'm talking about here? So let's move on so i sh showed you this one a while back so again um when talking about unsaturated fatty acid they have more than one double bond so the the first double bond came from the carboxyl group and the second or the other double bond will be seen now in your chain so we do have here different types of unsaturated fatty acids. So we have your palmito oleic, your oleic, your linoleic, your um, linolenic, and your arachidonic fatty acids. So they have um, different um, number of carbon atoms. And as you can see, they also have here the degree of unsaturation. So take, for example, for pal palmito palmitoleic um, acid, we have 16 carbon and the one there signify that it has one double bond aside from its carbonyl um, aside it from its carbonyl and it is found on your carbon carbon number nine same thing with your oleic okay and your linoleic um, as you can see it is eight 18 is the two so meaning to say it has 18 carbon and two double bonds in the chain which were found in carbon number nine and carbon number 12. Okay, so as you can see, comparing it now to the saturated fatty acid, the melting point of this fatty acid are actually lower. So meaning to say they are liquid in your, they are liquid in form in room temperature. So as you can see for, so that is, uh, um, that is one key um, distinguishing feature of your unsaturated fatty acid. So they are liquid in room temperature, while your saturated fatty acids are solid in liquid, solid in room temperature. So as I was mentioning a while back, um, unsaturated fatty acid, the notation used for fatty acid indicates the number of carbon atoms and the number of double bond. So in the system, 10 is to 0, it denotes that 18 carb it has 18 carbons of saturated fatty acid with no double bonds. Unlike the 18 is to 1 denotes 18 carbon fatty acid with one double bond. And that is your what? That is your oleic acid. Okay, that is your oleic acid. So as I was mentioning a while back, your fatty acids are actually... Um, has lower melting point than your saturated ones. So usually, this unsaturated fatty acid are the component of plant oils and are liquid at room temperature because they have higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acid compared to the unsaturated fatty acid found in your animal fat. So, sir, why is there um, an, a cis and trans configuration? So, gaya nga ng sabi ko kanina, we have a cis configuration and we have a trans configuration. Most of your unsaturated fat are actually in cis configuration because these are um, normally occurring unsaturated fat. Unlike your trans um, fatty acid, these are also known as your trans fat. Okay? These are also known as your trans fat. Your trans fat are synthetically pro uh, produced saturated um these are synthetically produced um these are synthetically produced fatty acid through the process of hydrogenation hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen atoms in your um fatty acid chain okay in your fatty acid chain and maybe some of you are wondering sir why is there a need to um, do hydrogenation if unsaturated fat are in fact healthy compared to saturated fat, saturated fats. So the, please do remember that unsaturated fat are yes healthy, are yes healthy, are yes good for your health, but they are unstable. So they spoil easily, napapanis sila agad. So 
for us to preserve the quality of such um, types of fatty acids or such type of oil, we actually do hydrogenation, okay? We actually do hydrogenation. So meaning to say, the process of the hydrogenation actually aims for the preservation of your unsaturated fatty acid. And maybe some of you are wondering, eh sir, bakit po siya masama para sa katawan? So let me talk about the three fatty acids now. So your unsaturated fatty acid, which are the good type of saturated fatty of the good type of fatty acid these are um this lowers down okay this lowers down your bad cholesterol and increases your good cholesterol unlike your saturated fatty acid they increase both okay they increase both your saturate the, the your saturated fatty acid rather they increase both your good cholesterol and your bad cholesterol. What about your trans fatty acid? Your trans fatty acid increases your bad cholesterol and decreases or diminishes the level of your good cholesterol. That's why it's bad. Um, and if you can see some of the food right now, you can see there that they do not have um, trans fat in them. And which leads me now to another point that I want to make. Trans fats are actually bad for the body, first and foremost, because they are synthetic. And secondly, since they are synthetic, our body do not have enzymes that will degrade or that will hydrolyze or digest this type of fatty acids, okay? This type of fats. Unlike for saturated and for your unsaturated, our body do have those types of um enzymes like your lipases okay that will actually degrade these types of fats unlike your trans fat wala tayong enzymes to degrade those so meaning to say naga add up pa siya dun sa um problem niya being a synthetic na um fatty acid and lastly okay and lastly siguro to wrap it up why is it that um, plant-based are good or your unsaturated fat are better compared to your unsaturated fat, again, babalik ako dun sa melting point nila. Your, as you can see, your your unsaturated fat are has high melting point. So meaning to say, even inside your body, they do tend to become solid, okay? Unlike your unsaturated fatty acid, they are liquid in your body. So meaning to say, um, yung mas madalas mag-cause mag ng bara or atherosclerosis within our arteries are actually the saturated fats and the trans fats, okay? So hopefully that's clear. So we are finished talking about your fatty acid. So if you do have any question, I will be entertaining your questions by the end of our discussion. So moving forward, let's go now to another type, okay? into another type of lipids which are your phospholipids your phospholipids are also known as your phosphoacylglycerol okay your phosphoacylglycerol or phospholipids are a lipid molecule that has two fatty acids okay that has two fatty acids esterified to a glycerol molecule so meaning to say your phospholipid is actually a compound already. It has two fatty acids attached to one glycerol molecule. The resulting compound is now called your phosphatidic acid, okay? Your phosphatidic acid. So one molecule of phosphoric acid can form ester bond both to glycerol and to some other alcohol, creating now your phosphatidyl ester. Your phosphatidyl esters are actually very important Okay, because they can actually combine with very essential um, compounds such as your cephalin, your lecithin, and also your cardiolipin. Okay, your cardiolipin. So first, let's go to the structure. So your phosphatidic acid, okay, your phosphatidic acid is just your phospho, your phosphatidic acid is just your glycerol, okay, it's just your glycerol and your your fatty acid combined with your phosphoric acid okay combined with your phosphoric acid while your phosphatidyl ester your phosphatidyl ester or this are glycerol is terrified with two carboxylic acid okay like your steric and linoleic 
meaning to say 2 fatty acid as well as phosphoric acid and in turn the phosphoric acid the one the the phosphoric acid on the other hand is also esterified to a second alcohol okay to a second alcohol and what are those alcohol those alcohol can actually be in the form of your phosphatidylcholine your phosphatidylethanolamine your phosphatidylserine your diphospho diphosphatidylglycerol your phosphatidylglycerol and your phosphatidyllinositol okay linositol so these are very important um these are very important um phospholipids so meaning to say let us just go back to how these structures are in the first place this one kapag ang meron ka lang ay dalawang fatty acid, isang glycerol, at isang phosphate group. We call them phosphatidic acid. But once that phosphate group, yung phosphate group na ito ngayon, will react to another alcohol, to a second alcohol. Take for example, your choline, your lecithin, your serine. That becomes now your phosphatidyl esters. Okay? And what are the different types of phosphatidyl esters? We have your phosphatidyl ethanolamine, your phosphatidyl serine, phosphatidyl glycerol. And siguro for you to remember one, your phosphatidyl serine, your PS, your phosphatidyl serine is very important for your red blood cells, correct? In hematology. And in addition to that, um, when it comes to phosph um, phospholipid, um, the most this is uh, these are actually the most abundant lipid in our body. Maybe some of you are will be wondering why. And I'll, I'm here to give you the answer immediately because most of our cells contain your cell membrane. Your cell membrane do have your phospholipid bilayer. So meaning to say, this is the reason why your phospholipid are actually the most abundant um, lipid inside your body because each and every cell does contain your phospholipid in their cell membrane. So aside from that, they also serve as surfactant. Okay, they actually serve as surfactant in your lungs. So when you go to your amniotic fluid in your AUBF, you will actually be discussing your um, other phospholipids, okay? Like your lecithin phosphatidylcholine, which comprise majority of the phospholipid in our body. We also, we also have your sphingomyelin. So sphingomyelin, especially important in your nerves they comprise 20 percent and we also have your cephalin okay we also have your cephalin so let us talk about some of the important phospholipids first so like your sphingomyelin so your sphingomyelin is the only phospholipid in the membrane that is not derived from glycerol but from an amino acid amino alcohol called your sphingosine okay your sphingo Seen. Your, your sphingomyelin are essential component of your cell membranes and this actually accumulate in your liver and spleen um, in patients suffering with Niemann-Pick disease. So your Niemann-Pick disease is actually a disorder whereby your sphingomyelin are accumulated are not and not metabolized. So they accumulate in your spleen and in your liver okay in your spleen and in your liver so a quick wrap up so we are we are finished talking about your fatty acids and we are finished talking about your phospholipids so your fatty acid being free fatty acids unsaturated saturated and trans fatty acid we also have your phospholipids now your phospholipids containing your um two fatty acid a glycerol and a phospho break acid and we now let's proceed to your triglyceride so I, I guess you're very much familiar with triglyceride because we did talk about this during gluconeogenesis and carbohydrate so your triglyceride or your triglyceride are also known as your triacylglycerol and also known as your neutral fat your triglyceride comprises or possesses three molecules of fatty acid that's why it is tri okay Try three molecules of fatty acid and a molecule of glycerol that serve as its backbone. So your triglycerides are very important because they are the main storage lipid in man in the form of your adipose tissue. So in your adipose tissue, these are actually your triglycerides, okay? So low, low calorie intake, meaning to say there will be low triglyceride level. So 
what are the function of your triglyceride? The, the your triglyceride can be metabolized, and when they are metabolized, they can be catabolized. They can be broken down into fatty acid and released to the cell and be converted as energy. That provide an and they can also provide excellent insulation um, in cold temperature. But in addition to that, your fat aside from fatty acid, I think you all know that this fatty acid will enter the Krebs cycle as your acetyl coenzyme A. But at the same time, um, a component of your triglyceride, which is your glycerol, will also be entering as 3-phosphoglycerate in your glycolysis, in your glycolytic pathway. Okay, so this is how the structure of your um, triglyceride look like. So this is your glycerol. So your the glycerol we will be um, attached to three fatty acids. As you can see, this is your fatty acid. And looking at this, this is actually a saturated fatty acid. And on the other hand, we have here your steric. So we have a glycerol molecule combined with a fatty acid, your myristic, your steric, and your palmitolic. Uh, laic acid. So these are a combination of both your saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Okay. So having said that now, okay, having said that now, um, please take note that these three ester groups are polar part of the molecule and the tails of the fatty acids are nonpolar. So the glycerol, okay, the the, for this part, this one, the one that you can see on my laser, these are actually the hydrophilic part and this one are the hydrophobic part. So uh, go, moving forward, okay, so when an organism uses fatty acid, the ester linkages in the triacylglycerol are hydrolyzed but by the enzyme called lipase. So remember, I told you that um, your triglyceride, before it can be utilized as energy source, it should be catabolized or broken down further. So how can they be hydrolyzed or broken down into its simpler form? We call those enzymes lipases, okay? These lipases are uh, the same hydrolysis reaction can take place outside the organism with acid and bases as your catalyst. So as you can see here, the hydrolysis of your the hydrolysis of your triglyceride, whereby it liberates now, it it will now li be liberating the fatty acid, which can be utilized as energy source within your body. So there you go for your triglyceride. We're finished with triglycerides already. So triglyceride being an effective source of energy and also a storage form for your excess calories, okay? So now we move on to your cholesterol. But before I move on to cholesterol, by the way, your 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 fatty acid, your phospholipids, and your... Um, your triglyceride can all be utilized as energy sources. So now let's go to cholesterol. Cholesterol, okay, let's go now to cholesterol. So, ewan ko kung yung breakfast nyo kanina may cholesterol, but yeah, let's talk about cholesterol. So cholesterol are not source of fuel because it is not catabolized by animals. So meaning to say, okay, meaning to say, we are not using cholesterol as energy sources. So if not, what is the use now of your cholesterol? But your cholesterol contains four rings of a single carbon to hydrogen chain tail similar as well to your fatty acid. So if your cholesterol cannot be utilized as energy sources, what is the use of cholesterol? Cholesterol is very important in your body because they are precursor of the five major classes of steroids which are your progestins, your glucocorticoids, your mineralocorticoids, your androgens, and your estrogens. So your progestins, androgens, and estrogens related in your sexual functions. And of course, your glucocorticoids that will bring forth your cortisol and your mineralocorticoids that will bring forth your aldosterone, which are very important in the um, metabolism of carbohydrates and in the um, regulation of carbohydrate and at the same time regulation of very essential electrolytes in your body. So, hindi man natin siya ginagamit as energy source, may iba siyang silbi, okay? Aside from that, aside from being precursor 
of your hormones, okay? And I want to be clear, steroid hormones, it is also found in the surface of lipid layers which are synthesized in your liver, okay? Which are synthesized in your liver. So again, this type of cholesterol can be converted into becoming your testosterone, estradiol, and your progesterone, which are very important, um, which are very important um, hormones within our system. In addition to that, there are actually two types of cholesterol. We have the cholesterol esters and we also have the free cholesterol. Okay, we have the free cholesterol. So let's talk about your cholesterol esters. Your cholesterol esters are the most abundant type of cholesterol. So cholesterol esters are composed of cholesterol rings and fatty acids. So they undergo esterification by your lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase or your LCAT. So your LCAT catalyzes this esterification of cholesterol by promoting the transfer of your fatty acid from your lecithin to cholesterol which results into the formation of your lysolecithin or your and your um, cholesterol esters. So your cholesterol esters, for the information of everyone, are hydrophilic, okay? These are hydrophilic cholesterol, meaning to say they love water, they attract water. How come, okay, how come that this cholesterol can do that? That is because of the, what? That is because now of the um, fatty acid attached to them, okay? The esterification of your cholesterol done by your lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase okay so that those are your cholesterol esters what about now that other type of cholesterol if 70 percent of your cholesterol are cholesterol cholesterol esters we also have 30 percent um as your free cholesterol your free cholesterol are an esterified cholesterol and these are found now in the surfaces of your lipoprotein sir why do we see them in the surfaces of your lipoprotein first and foremost because since they are hydrophobic they cannot freely be transported in your plasma meaning to say kailangan nila ng tagabuhat kailangan nila ng, kap ng tagapagdala sa kanila and that is in the form of your lipo proteins okay that is in the form of your lipoproteins so before we move before we move on okay before we move on let us talk about your cholesterol first your cholesterol are actually derived from acetyl coenzyme a so it actually there um it actually is a diversion of your krebs cycle so yung nakikita nyo acetyl coenzyme a will be undergoing another other processes. So your cholesterol can be synthesized from more than 25 enzymes. So the process is very lengthy. So we will not be talking about that, but we will be talking about the key or the principal steps with regards to the production or the formation of your cholesterol. Namely, first, the conversion of your acyl coenzyme A, um, acyl coenzyme A, which are derived from the beta oxidation of your fatty acids. So the beta oxidation of your fatty acid will now give, um, bring forth your acyl acetyl coenzyme A. Your acetyl coenzyme A will undergo oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate by beta hydroxy beta methyl um, glutaryl coenzyme A. Okay, coenzyme A or your HMG CoA. Okay, your HMG. CoA to produce your HMG CoA. So after the conversion of your acetyl coenzyme A, it will now be oxidized and decarboxylated, producing now your HMG CoA. This HMG CoA will now be converted to mevalonic acid by your HMG CoA reductase. Okay? And when that mevalonic acid is now produced, it will now undergo um, cyclization producing now your squalene and now will bring forth your cholesterol, okay? Will now bring forth your cholesterol. So let me repeat that again. So coming from um, acetyl coenzyme A, so ang nangyari, na bet, nagkaroon ng beta oxidation ng fatty acid, anong, anong na-produce? Acetyl coenzyme A. This acetyl coenzyme A will undergo oxidation and decarboxylation and will now produce your 
beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl coenzyme A, also known as your HMG CoA. Okay, are, are you following? After HMG CoA, this HMG CoA will now be converted to mevalonic acid. Sinong mag convert sa HMG CoA? Becoming now mevalonic acid, that is your HMG and CoA reductase. And then yung mevalonic acid na na-produce will be um, converted further into squalene. And after cyclization, it will now be um it will now become your cholesterol. And maybe some of you are wondering, sir, bakit po naka-highlight si HMG CoA reductase? Because I want you to take down note of this because when you become doctor in the future, you would know that your HMG-CoA reductase is the enzyme that is being in inhibited by your statins. What are statins? Your statins are main components of your yung mga maintenance ng mga elderly natin, yung mga, main, yung mga maintenance ng mga may problem sa cholesterol. So for us to lower down their cholesterol, what do we do? We prevent the production of cholesterol. And what particular part, okay? What particular part? Ano yung ini-inhibit natin? Ini-inhibit natin yung HMG-CoA reductase para hindi na maproduce mevalonic acid. At pag hindi na produce mevalonic acid, hindi mapoproduce si squalene. At kapag hindi na produce si squalene, hindi mapoproduce or hindi tataas ang cholesterol ng pasyente mo. So hopefully, I'm clear with that. Okay? So, um, that is the, the different forms of your, those are the different forms of your um, lipids. We have your fatty acids, okay? We did talk about your fatty acid. We talk about your phospholipids, your triglyceride, and also your cholesterol. So before we move forward, uh, I want you to inhale. So I'm giving you a few seconds of break. Hold, exhale. Hold. So let's inhale once again. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Now for the last time, inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. And now you're ready for more. Okay, you're ready for more. So let's continue our discussion about the general structure now of your lipoprotein. So going back kanina, no, meron tayong apat na lipids. Your fatty acid, your um, phospholipids, your triglycerides, and your cholesterol. Para saan ulit si lipoprotein? Your lipoproteins are um, carrier molecule. Carrier molecule nino, carrier molecule ng mga hydrophobic lipids. Such as what? Such as your, your saturated fatty acids, number one. Your free cholesterol, okay? Your free cholesterol and also your triglycerides, okay? Your, also your triglyceride, since they are all hydrophobic. So, hindi nila kayang magbiyahe ng mag-isa sa plasma, so kailangan nila ng ride. And that ride is your lipoprotein, okay? So, what are lipoproteins? Lipoproteins are macromolecular complexes of lipids with specialized protein known as apolipoprotein. So your lipoprotein is actually a combination of your lipids and your protein. Okay? A combination of your lipids and your protein. The lipids are of course known as your lipids and the protein part of your lipoprotein are called what? Apolipoprotein. So what are their main purpose? Their main purpose is to transport your triglyceride and your cholesterol to site of energy storage and utilization. So, saan sila dinadala, kung saan sila gagamitin, or kung saan sila itatago. Yun lang yung pagdadalhan ng lipoprotein sa ating mga fats. Either kung saan siya gagamitin, again, at kung saan siya itatago. So, let us go to your lipoproteins. 
So we have different types of lipoprotein and these are the major classes of plasma lipoproteins that I want you to remember. We have your chylomicrons, we have your VLDL, also known as your very low density lipoprotein. We have your IDL, which is your intermediate density lipoprotein, your LDL, your low density lipoprotein, and your HDL, also known as your high density lipoprotein. Why do we call them such? Bakit natin sila tinatawag na according to their density? Why do we call them according to, why do we have such thing as very low density, low density, and high density lipoprotein? As you can see, that is mainly because of their protein component, the apolipoprotein in the lipoprotein. So as you can see, um, this, is, this table here, table 17-2, actually is the chemical composition of the major classes of plasma lipoprotein. So here pa lang, we are able to differentiate one from the other. And I want you to take a very close look at this one. Among this, um, please disregard the IDL. Among the 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, among the chylomicron, VLDL, I, LDL, and HDL, among those four, okay, among those four, the one that has um the greatest amount of protein are actually your high density lipoprotein okay high density lipoprotein ang may pinakamadaming cholesterol naman on the other hand be it a free cholesterol or cholesterol esters are actually your low density lipoprotein or your ldl okay ldl so kapag pinakamadaming protein hdl kapag pinakamaraming cholesterol LDL. On the other hand, kapag pinakamaraming triglyceride, wait, 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 dalawa yan. Pinakamadaming triglyceride, either your chylomicrons and your VLDL. Sir, paano namin madi-differentiate? Mamaya, maghinay-hinay at maghintay ka lang dahil i-discuss yan later ni sir. And lastly, according to phospholipid content, ang may pinakamaraming phospholipid content is also your HDL. So again, pinakamadaming protein at phospholipids are your HDL, pinakamaraming cholesterol, cholesterol, -le letter L, that is your LDL, at ang pinakamadami mong triglyceride, dalawa, chylomicrons, and your VLDL. Mamaya, explain natin why. So, this is a general structure of your lipoprotein structure, okay? Um, your, your, your lipoprotein. So, as you can see, um, the entire structure, okay, the entire structure, we call that your lipoprotein, okay? But the protein portion, what do we call the protein portion of your lipoprotein? We call it your apolipoprotein. And as you can see, inside it are your cholesterol ester, your free cholesterol, and your triglyceride. So, nasa loob, okay, nasa hydrophobic core, yung ating mga hydrophobic lipids. Okay, hydrophobic lipids such as your fatty acid, triglyceride, and cholesterol esters that needs to be transported. Okay, that needs to be transported. So, moving forward, makikita ninyo dito sa ating, sa ating, um, lipoprotein, we also have your cholesterol and phospholipid in the surface. Okay? In the surface. So, kanina, siguro nagtataka kayo, Sir, bakit po natin sila tinatawag na um, very low density or um, high density, low density lipoprotein? That is because of their buoyant density. Okay? That is because of their buoyant density density. So in figure 17-2, you can see there the two, um, these are actually two ways on how to name your lipoprotein. We can name them according to their buoyant density and we can also give them their name according to their electro, uh, electrophoretic mobi mobility. So for figure letter A, okay, for figure A, this is your buoyant density. Your buoyant density um, is, a, uh, is a process whereby makikita natin yung density ng ating lipoproteins, okay? Yung density ng ating lipoproteins. So, yung density ng lipoproteins natin, we can separate our one lipoprotein from the other based on 
ultra centrifugation. So we you did your ultra centrifugation in letter A. Again, pag buoyant density, anong ginawa mo? Ultra centrifugation. Sa electrophoretic mobility naman, anong ginawa mo? Electrophoresis. So here in your buoyant density, you can see here that your lipoproteins can be differentiated or can be separated according to their density. Coming from from the least density, from the least dense, and the most dense of them all. Which is the least dense? The least dense is your chylomicrons, okay? Your least dense is your chylomicron, pinakamagaan. Pangalawa is your very low density lipoprotein or your VLDL. Your low density lipoprotein comes next or your LDL at ang pinakamabigat, pinakanandun sa ilalim is your high density lipoprotein. Again, bakit ulit? Babalik tayo dun sa table natin because your high density lipoprotein has the highest um, concentration of your protein uh, here. So as you can see, ito, ay, ito siya. Pinakamabigat kasi pinakamaraming protein. Sumunod si LDL, tapos si VLDL, tapos si chylomicrons. Yung pinakamagaan kaya siya yung pinaka nasa ibabaw. Okay, pinaka nasa ibabaw. On the other hand, um, we also have their electrophoretic mobility. Your electrophoretic mobility, okay, kung gaano ito, kung sino yung pinakamagaan, siya actually yung pinakamalaki. Okay, yung pinakamagaan, pinakamalaki. Um, in the case of your lipoprotein, so your meaning to say your chylomicron is the largest. That's that is the reason why kapag electrophoretic mobility, si chylomicrons na iiwan siya sa sa point of application or sa origin. Okay, at kapag nagmigrate yan, okay, kapag nagmigrate yan, we can now um, differentiate your lipoprotein according to their electrophoretic mobility. So being here number one, your chylomicrons. Ang pinaka ang sumunod kay chylomicron is your beta lipoprotein. Your beta lipoprotein is also known as your what? Not your very low density. I want you to be careful of that. Your beta lipoprotein is not your VLDL. Instead, your beta lipoprotein are actually your LDL. Okay? Your LDL. And then your pre-beta lipoproteins are yes your e VLDL. So are you getting it? And then your alpha lipoproteins are your HDL. So kapag ultra centrifugation, ito yung arrangement. Chylomicrons, VLDL, LDL, and HDL. But if we are talking about electrophoretic mobility, the arrangement now is your chylomicrons, your beta lipoproteins, your pre-beta lipoproteins, and your alpha lipoproteins. Sir, can we interchange it? Can I call uh, beta lipoprotein LDL? Yes, you can call them be, um, interchangeably because they are one and the same. Okay? But make sure na kapag i-identify nyo siya sa electrophoretic, uh, in their electrophoretic mobility, you will be able to differentiate one from the other. Am I clear? So again, that is for the lipoprotein. So let's us talk about them one by one para maintindihan ninyo. So later, babalik tayo dito para makita natin if we actually did understand what is the difference between and actually among those four lipoproteins. So let's go and start with your chylomicron. So your chylomicrons is a normal lipoprotein, meaning to say, normally found yan sa katawan mo. So your chylomicron is actually the largest chylo, the largest lipoprotein, but the least dense among all lipoprotein. So meaning to say, it has the lowest density, pinakamagaan siya, okay? So what does your chylomicrons do? Okay, and I want you to take note of this. It transports your triglyceride. But what type of triglyceride? It transports your exogenous triglyceride. What do we mean, sir, by exogenous triglyceride? Your exogenous triglycerides are the ones that are from your diet. Kunwari, kumain ka. Yung triglyceride na nasa pagkain mo ngayon, yan, yan, tama. Yung inunguya mo ngayon. Yung triglyceride na nasa diet mo ngayon ay dadalhin ni chylomicrons. Okay? Dadalhin ni chylomicrons. So, Later, pag nandun na tayo sa pathway ng, met ng metabolism ng, ng lipids, you will understand it better. So for now, your chylomicrons transports your exogenous triglyceride. 
take note that your chylomicrons are produced in your intestines, okay? Produced in your intestines and are completely cleared within 6 to 9 hours post-prandial. Ito yung kadahilanan kung bakit merong fasting ang ating lipid profile. It is because of your chylomicrons. We need to clear out the chylomicrons first in your diet that is seen in your plasma after eating, okay? So, 6 to 9 hours. That's why we have a fasting hours for lipids na 10 hours, okay? So, your chylomicrons are present at high level. When present in high level, yung chylomicrons natin will act is actually the one that results to the milky appearance of your plasma. Kaya pala mukhang turbid, kaya pala mukhang milky yung ating plasma dahil marami itong chylomicrons. Maaari nakakatapos lang ng patient natin kumain nung kinunan natin siya ng dugo. Okay? So this chylomicrons accumulate on the where? Accumulate below or accumulate on top? Below or on top? Okay? Tama, it should be on top, okay? It is floating as a creamy layer when left undisturbed for several hours, okay? For several hours. So as you can see, the major component, composition of your chylomicrons are 90% triglyceride. But from now on, ayokong maririnig kayo na tinatawag lang na triglyceride. But I want you to be more specific para lagi tayong tama. We should always remember that your chylomicrons contains 90% of what? Exogenous. Okay. 90% of exogenous triglyceride. Kaya kanina sinasabi ko na ang triglyceride mo can be seen majority in your chylomicrons and in your VLDL kasi magkaiba pa lang klase ng triglyceride yung tinutukoy natin dito. So I hope you already have an idea what type of triglyceride does your VLDL contains or carries as we move forward. So again, for your chylomicrons, it, it is the largest and least dense. It is the exogenous triglyceride. And it contains, um, it is produced in your intestine and um, it actually is the one responsible for the milky appearance of your plasma. In addition to that, your chylomicrons, okay, do have an apolipoprotein. Meron siyang protein naman din sa kanya, which are your ApoB48, your Apo A1, Apo A4, Apo A, Apo C1, Apo C2, Apo C3, and Apo E. Sir, ang dami na ang dami naman pong Apo Apo. Ano yung pinakakailangan mong tandaan? Yung Apo B48. Why? Because Apo B48 is specific and is unique to your Kylo microns. Correct ka dyan, okay? In metabolism of chylomicrons, your Apo C2 serves as an activator of your, your, of your lipoprotein lipase. So meaning to say, yung chylomicrons mo will be digested, will be um, broken down by your lipases producing now your chylomicron remnants. Okay? So kung makikita nyo dito sa figure na to, di ba? Chylomicrons yung pinakamalaki pero pinaka magaan. Okay? Pinakamalaki at pinaka magaan. So let's go now to our next lipoprotein. So I hope clear tayo sa chylomicrons. Again, kung may katanungan, hold your horses and ask me that later uh, for our Q and A. So for our very low density lipoproteins, we have here your VLDL. Your very low density lipoprotein are also known, okay, as your pre-beta lipoprotein. Okay? Your pre-beta lipoprotein is the same thing with VLDL. Your VLDL particle are produced where? This time, they are produced in your liver. So, your VLDL are the one that supplies. Okay? Your very low density lipoprotein are the one that supply the tissue of your, bo the tissue of your body with triglyceride. What type of triglyceride, sir? Triglyceride, which are your endogenous triglyceride. Your endogenous triglyceride are primarily hepatic by origin. Okay? Hepatic by origin. So this type of lipoproteins, parehas ni chylomicrons, nagdadala din ng triglyceride. Pero this time, triglyceride ito na produce ng iyong liver. Okay? Hindi galing sa kinain mo. So, let us differentiate the two, okay? Si chylomicron, daladala niya 
exogenous triglyceride galing dun sa kinain mong um, pagkain. Si, eh, si VLDL, si very low density lipoprotein, also known as your pre-beta lipoprotein, carries this time your triglyceride. What type of triglyceride be specific? Your endogenous triglyceride. What do we mean by endogenous triglyceride? These are types of triglyceride produced by your own body, specifically by your liver. Okay? So your very low density lipoprotein contains 50% triglyceride, 40% cholesterol, and like phospholipid, and 10% protein. Sir, what type of protein? Okay, what type of protein? Your APO lipoprotein, specifically your APO B100, APO C1, APO C2, APO C3, and also APO E. Kung makikita mo, okay, what specific APO lipoprotein is found in your um, is found in your very low density lipoprotein? It is actually your APO B100. Okay. Mostly APO B100 and also APO E. Okay? And also APO E. So, pakiki-insert lang ko sa copy ng PowerPoint mo. Tama yan. Okay? So, now that we discuss your chylomicrons and your VLDL, I hope na nare-realize ninyo na they are transport molecules. Pero may specific sila na itinatransport. Para yung mga jeep. Hindi lahat ng jeep is pare-parehas ang daladala -dala, at hindi lahat ng jeep pare-parehas ng pupuntahan. Okay? So, kunwari, may jeep na ang mga sinasakay lang ay estudyante. So, estudyante lang isasakay niya. Merong jeep na ang isinasakay lang ay mga senior citizen. May mga jeep na ang sinasakay ay yung mga mga trabahador. May mga ganun. Okay? So, iba-iba sila ng tinatransport at iba-iba sila ng destination. Okay, so ganun din yung ating mga lipoproteins. Okay, so let's go now to one lipoprotein once again. And these are your low-density lipoprotein or your LDL. Your low-density lipoprotein, makikisulat ako kapatid. Your low-density lipoprotein are also known as your beta lipoprotein. So meaning to say, kapag ang gamit mo, ultra centrifugation, makikita mo siya as your low-density lipoprotein. Pero kapag gumamit ka ng electrophoresis, makikita mo siya as your beta lipoprotein. Your beta lipoprotein are also known as your bad cholesterol. Bakit kaya siya tinawag na bad cholesterol? Ito siya. Your LDL is actually produced through the metabolism of your VLDL. So meaning to say, yung VLDL mo, magiging IDL at pag naging IDL siya, magiging mabibreakdown siya, now becoming your LDL. Okay? Your LDL. Your LDL constitute about 50% of the total lipoprotein mass in the human plasma. Okay? So, meaning to say, yung LDL mo, galing din sa liver. So, from VLDL, naging IDL, naging LDL. So, your LDL... Okay, your LDL transports your cholesterol. What type of your your LDL transports your cholesterol? This cholesterol are from your liver that will be delivered now to your peripheral tissue. So natatandaan mo ba na ang cell membrane mo kailangan ng cholesterol? Ang iba't iba mong cell lalo na sa adrenal gland, sa testis, sa ovary, kailangan din nila ng cholesterol kasi your cholesterol are actually precursor to your steroid hormones, correct? So paano makakarating doon si cholesterol? Eh hindi siya hindi sila friends ng water. Dadalhin siya ni low density lipoprotein, correct? ni low-density lipoprotein. So, they will be transporting your cholesterol papunta ngayon sa mga peripheral tissue ng iyong katawan. So, about 50% of the total lipoprotein in the plasma are actually LDL. Okay? Are LDL. And I want you to remember that your the main APO lipoprotein in your LDL are your APO B100 with traces of APO C. Okay? With traces of your APO C. And this is why we call them your, and this is now your bad cholesterol. So, 
maybe some of you are wondering, sir, bakit mo siya tinatawag na bad cholesterol? Why we are why do we call it bad cholesterol? We are calling your lipo your low density lipoprotein as bad cholesterol because they deliver your cholesterol in your peripheral tissue. So the more cholesterol there is in your body, the more LDL there is also in your body. So mas mad, mas madaming excess cholesterol, mas madami ding excess LDL in your body. So right now, what king magalala, I don't want to overwhelm you, but for now what I want you to remember are the function kung saan galing, kung saan produce, at kung ano ang daladala ng bawat lipoproteins natin. Para pagdating natin dun sa ating pathway, dun sa ating metabolic pathway, mas madali nyo nang maiintindihan kung paano siya nangyayari. Okay? So, again, gaya nga nung yung, yung example natin kanina, ay actually uh, inihalin tulad ko yung mga lipoproteins sa mga jeep. So yung jeep mo may kanya-kanyang daladala na pasahero at may may kanya-kanyang destination sila na papupuntahan. Okay? So let's go now to the last, okay, to the last um lipoproteins which are your high density lipoprotein. Oh teka, bakit nga tinawag ulit siyang high density lipoprotein? Kasi siya yung heaviest lipoprotein. But it is the smallest then, okay? Heaviest lipoprotein kasi pinakamadami siyang protein, okay? Kaya siya yung nandun sa pinakababa after ultra centrifugation, pero siya naman yung pinakamabilis during electrophoresis. Bakit siya po yung pinakamabilis? Kasi siya po yung smallest lipoprotein. So this um high density lipoprotein are produced in two area or to do um, organs, your liver and your intestine. So your high density lipoprotein has two shapes. You have your this shape and your spherical shape. So yung this shape and yung spherical shape. Sir, bakit po important yung this shape at yung spherical shape? Eto, makikisulat na lang ako kasi kay Bishop, madami pa siyang kwento, pero kay Sir, idiretso na natin sa point natin na gustong May isulat, your high-density lipoprotein that are this shape, these are the high-density lipoprotein na kaya pang magkolekta ng mga kolesterol. Sir, magkolekta meaning to say, kapag madaming sobra sa, kunwari, madaming sobra sa tissue, si high-density lipoprotein yung magkolekta ng mga sobra. Okay? Kaya, effective yon kapag this shape pa siya. Paano naman, sir, kapag puno na yung high-density lipoprotein? Meaning to say, si high-density lipoprotein, yung sobrang kolesterol sa katawan mo, dadalhin niya pabalik kay kolesterol. Ano naman ang itsura ng high-density lipoprotein na yun? Spherical shape na siya. Kasi madami na siyang dalang kolesterol within, within itself na dadalhin niya sa liver. Having said that now, your HDL or your high-density lipoprotein is involved in your reverse cholesterol transport. Sir, what do we mean by reverse cholesterol transport? Natatandaan kanina si, li si low-density lipoprotein. Si low-density lipoprotein, ang ginagawa niya, dadalhin niya yung cholesterol na galing sa liver papunta sa mga peripheral tissue. Pero alam din natin na merong mga pagkakataon na sobrang dami yung sob sumusobra yung kolesterol na nadadala. Eh, pag sumusobra yung kolesterol na nadadala, that can cause um, disorder and diseases in our body, which is another story for another time. Eh, sinong magkokolekta, sinong maglilinis ng mga sobrang kolesterol na nasa tissue or nasa plasma, sino? Si high-density lipoprotein. Tama. Siya yung magkokolekt ng mga excess kolesterol in your plasma at ibabalik niya ito sa liver para ma-store at para ma-process pa further. So, unlike all other um kilo, other lipoprotein, your high-density lipoprotein, meron din siyang katangi-tanging Apo lipoprotein or protein component and that is your Apo A1. So quick recap. Okay, quick review lang. Si Apo si Kylomicrons, meron siyang Apo B48. Si Apo si VLDL at si VLDL, meron siyang um Apo B100 at Apo E. Si LDL, meron siyang Apo B100 as the major the major Apo lipoprotein at si high density lipoprotein naman, meron siyang major Apo lipoprotein which is called your Apo A1. Okay, Apo A1. So your high density lipoprotein is also known 
as your alpha cholesterol, eh, alpha lipoprotein, and your good cholesterol. Okay, your good cholesterol. And maybe some of you are wondering, sir, parang medyo nagigets ko na po. Okay, nagigets ko na po kung bakit sila tinawag na mga ganito. So, going back here, si chylomicrons are called just chylomicrons. So, kapag ultra centrifugation, sila yung pinaka nasa itaas. Kasi kahit napakalaki nila, pinakamagaan naman sila. Kasunod si VLDL, si LDL, at si HDL. So, mag- magigets yun na kung bakit siya high density kasi siya yung pinaka may madaming protein sa kanyang sa, sa kanyang particle. Okay? Now we go to the electrophoretic pattern. Sir, bakit kaya naiwan si Kylomicron? Bakit kaya ganito yung arrangement nila? I want to show you this picture. So, natatandaan ninyo, di ba? Sa, sa electrophoresis. Electro, in electrophoresis, meron tayong support medium. And your support medium are porous medium. So, meaning to say, yan ay bilog-bilog. They are like filters. So, meaning to say, mas malaking molecule, mas mahirap makadaan dun sa mga pores nung ating medium. Mas maliit ka, gaya ni HDL, mas mabilis kang makakadaan doon at mas mabilis kang makakausad doon sa ating doon sa ating membrane. So, gaya dito, si chylomicrons yung nai- ay naiwan kasi hindi siya maka-move on. Okay, ikaw ba yun? Hindi ka maka-move on? Ay, ibang topic pala yon. Si chylomicrons yung hindi maka-move on kasi sobrang laki. Nung daladala niyang sama ng loob, hindi siya maka-move on dun sa porous membrane. Tama? Pero si alpha lipoprotein in the form... Eh, Alpha lipoprotein, also known as your good cholesterol, also known as your high density lipoprotein, mabilis siya. Okay, mabilis siya makatravel, mabilis siya makamove on kasi wala siyang daladalang bagahe. So this one, your beta lipoprotein is your um v- your li- low density lipoprotein, your pre-beta lipoprotein is your very low density lipoprotein. So gusto ko 'yan matandaan mo. Okay? I want you guys to remember that. So before we proceed, okay? Before we proceed, okay, isa munang inhale, okay, hold that up, exhale, okay, inhale once again, hold, okay, inhale, hold, now exhale. Hold. And now for the last time. Okay, gayahin nyo. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Inhale. Now you're ready for some active recall. Okay. You are now ready for some active recall. Okay. So, for our active recall, gusto ko um, ma-recall natin, matandaan natin kung ano yung pinag-usapan natin for today. So, let's go and start with the first one. What do you call, what is the least dense lipoprotein? Ano yung least dense lipoprotein? Chat box, please. Which is the least dense lipoprotein? So, five seconds. One, two, three, four, Five. These are your, correct, these are your chylomicrons. What lipoprotein is the most dense? Five seconds, most dense, kahit acronym lang. One, two, three, four, and five. What do we call them? We call them your HDL or your high-density lipoprotein. Your high-density lipoprotein is also known as what? Chat box. One, two, three, four. And five, your HDL are also known as your alpha lipoprotein. Another question, what type of lipoprotein transports your exogenous triglycerides? Sino daw ang nagdadala ng exogenous triglycerides? Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. What uh, That is the answer. These are your chylomicrons once again. What about those lipoproteins that carries your endogenous triglyceride? What type of lipoproteins are those? Five seconds in the chat box, everyone. One, two, three, 
four, and five. And what do we call that? Those are your very low density lipoprotein. Oh, very good. I see I see some good um, answers on the chat box. Okay, participate everyone. So let's go. Uh, active recall para talagang ma-master ma natin ito. Your good cholesterol are also known as what? Five seconds in the chat box. Everyone, one, two, three, four, and five. These are your HDL or your high-density lipoprotein. And for the last one, mga kapatid, huli na pong tanong, uh, what do we call your bad cholesterol? Your bad cholesterol are also known as your five seconds. One, two, three, four, and five. These are called your low-density lipoproteins. Correct, 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 Adyan. So thank you so much. So those are your um, some active recalls that we had. Hopefully, you had a great time. So um, that is it for um, our discussion about uh, lipids, about the different forms of lipids, and the different um, types and structure of your lipoprotein. So thank you so much, everyone. So this has been your Sir Jomar Ganding. So thank you so much. And that is it for our discussions. I will be entertaining your questions now. So please type it in your chat box or open your camera and your mic so I would so I can entertain your questions for today. So let's get started.